say whenever uh, you're talking and then whenever, by the time that they get it. So if you are monitoring, expect that delay. Great, and I just remembered to put my, um, my thing on mute. And I lost the chat. Uh, okay. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, welcome to the presentation. Um, this is the the first remote YouTube Hangout uh, presentation that uh, that we're giving here at the PDX uh, PowerShell User Group. So uh, we're we're hoping it goes well. Uh, we've got a veteran here in in uh, in Chrissy. Um, so we're. Uh, hopefully, her good luck, uh, you know, rubs off on us. Um, it's a PS Power Hour. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, hello to everybody in the chat room. Uh, I can't reliably see your chats uh, at the moment, so it might take me a little while to respond to you if you raise your hand and you ask questions in the chat room. But uh, I'm going to be working on uh, making sure that I can get to those uh, as um, as Chrissy's giving her uh, presentation. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to think if we have, I wanna thank what? We, we're we not at a physical location, but I do wanna just go ahead and give a shout out to our typical uh, sponsors. Um, we have uh, Viewpoint, who's always been great to us about a uh, about a location to do the meetup, even though we're not using them this week. I, I wanna say hi to them. Um, and then we have um, uh, Sapien Software, who usually uh, sponsors our food. Hopefully you guys brought your own bag lunches wherever you are, um, so. Uh, hopefully you're not uh, you're not starving, but if you are, I guess that's your fault. Um, so, uh, without too much further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Chrissy and and say, um, you know, thanks for coming, thanks for doing this, and um, I've been a huge fan of the uh, DBA tools module for a, uh, a long time. I don't get to do as much DBA stuff as I used to, but uh, but darn, I, I still love seeing all the PowerShell deliciousness applied to a SQL Server. Um, so uh, please, please do uh, take it away. Thank you so much. That was a very kind welcome. Uh, my name is Chrissy Lemaire, and today I'm presenting Doomsday Prepping with DBA Tools. So a little bit about me. Oh, I have to remind myself not to shout. Uh, I was on a presentation before that was remote, and I was all excited so that I could embed it in a post it turns out I was shouting the whole time. So, Bill, if you hear me shouting, just please let me know. Uh, because whenever I practice, I'm yelling at a wall, so I'm going to try not to yell at the wall right now. So a little bit about me. I am at CL on Twitter. I'm also a dual PowerShell and SQL Server MVP. Um, and just recently, Rob Sewell and I got together, and uh, I'm the co-lead with him for the PASS DevOps Virtual Group. Uh, this is... Um, we haven't got uh, we haven't got it completely set up yet, but we do plan to get it started uh, probably next week or sorry next month, and that is at devops.pass.org. So if you want to join, sign up. We're going to have a bunch of cool PowerShell and DevOps stuff. Um, for my day job, I am a systems engineer with GDIT at NATO Special Ops headquarters in Belgium. So on today's agenda, I'm going to give you a general. Uh, disaster recovery intro, and then we'll talk about SQL Server specific disaster recovery. I'm going to do a demo, and then I'll take some questions. So the definitions, um, I want to introduce high availability because even though this is a presentation about disaster recovery, a lot of times you'll hear the term HADR, and the HA part is high availability, which deals with minor outages. Uh, and oftentimes the failover solutions are automated. So if you have a failover clustered instance, for instance, you know, if you lose a node, it'll just come right back online. Um, and the goal is to restore full system functionality within a short time. Now with disaster recovery, that actually deals with major outages such as natural and man-made disasters. So uh, hurricanes are, um, actually, uh, the first time that I was introduced to the idea, and I think a lot of us potentially of disaster recovery was after uh, the terrorist attacks on 9-11. Um, 
I know with us, I was working at a law firm in downtown San Diego. We were in a high rise and all of our data was there. And after the attacks, we realized um, that we really needed to distribute all of our data to all of our branches. So that was my first foray uh, into understanding the importance of disaster recovery. And disaster recovery, it focuses on manual processes and procedures to restore the systems back to their original state. Uh, so there's not that expectation. Um, it is not high availability. This does take a little bit longer. So uh, I really liked the reasons why I had, I was doing some research and I went back to my notes uh, from my master's class at Regis University. I took a class on HA and DR and it mentioned that uh, disaster recovery is important because there's certain federal regulations in the EU and the US that actually require the development of DR plans. And also a lot of business partners and customers, they often demand proof of DR plans and hopefully testing as well. But ultimately it's all about business continuity. And there was a study by Cleveland State University that said that a company that experiences a power outage, sorry, a computer outage lasting more than 10 days will never fully recover financially. And within five years, 50% of those companies will actually be out of business. So DR is super important uh, for businesses and business continuity. When it comes to who, so the DR plan and execution, it's the responsibility of the entire organization, which includes us techs and also the executives. And if the organization isn't prepared, it's not the responsibility of one person. And I mention this because there was a, there was a thread on Reddit uh, where a kid went, started his first day, accidentally dropped the production database. Um, and he was threatened by the CTO and he was not just fired, but he was also threatened with legal action. And um, if you actually go and you look down deeper in that thread, they had mentioned that uh, Amazon experienced something similar, but they didn't place the responsibility on that single tech. They knew that it was organi an organizational failure, but nevertheless, we as professionals, we want to be awesome. And this presentation will show you how. So let's talk about SQL Server specific database disaster recovery. Microsoft offers a lot whenever it comes to this. And I wanted to uh, point out the source here is Tracy Baggiano's super awesome uh, HADR presentation. I linked it here at sqlps.io slash HADR. Goes pretty in depth um, and I really liked it. She even gives recommendations for larger companies and smaller companies as well. So the first thing is backup and restore. Uh, you can also use DAC packs and backpacks. Replication is a DR uh, solution, log shipping, mirroring. And I know that mirroring has been deprecated, uh, but not every environment is ideal. Uh, and you know, some, some of us have to support 2008 and so on. And so if you're using that, you can use mirroring as a DR solution. Also multi-site failover clustering and availability groups. So let's talk about some scenarios. And this also comes from my class. It said, my professor said that the faster you want to get data back, the more you're going to pay. And so let's look at a couple of them. The first one is the simplest and the most affordable. Uh, that's Ola Hallengren's scheduled backups. That's, he has a free and open source solution called Maintenance Solution. It's at ola.hallengren.org. Um, Microsoft recommends it. It's really awesome. So you can get that for free. And then you can use RoboCopy replication and uh, send that out to a secondary data center or the cloud. And this is something that even though it's possible, I don't use it. Um, I actually do use Ola Hallengren scripts but then I have my storage admin uh, replicate out to our secondary location. And whenever it comes to the most complex and the most expensive, that's going to be geo replicated distributed availability groups. Uh, the reason that it's the most complex and the most expensive is because it requires a lot more resources. Um, it's going to require an additional data center, uh, more CPU, horsepower, et cetera, more uh, licenses, more SQL Server licenses, and also more Windows Server licenses. 
And something that I thought was interesting about the, the geo-replicated distributed availability groups, whenever I think of AGs, I think of high availability, but whenever you're doing this, uh, these distributed availability groups, it actually becomes strictly DR and not an HA solution. So, you know, Microsoft offers a whole lot whenever it comes to SQL Server specific database disaster recovery, but there's a lot more that we have to keep in mind. We have to also back up our logins and everything in SQL Agent, and then also all of this, all of your extended events, your link servers with their passwords, your credentials with their passwords, audits, audit specs, all of your configuration. For those of you who use CMS, that as well, your database and so on. And the way that we do this is, how do you export it? You open up SQL Server Management Studio, you go to the job, you right click, you script to create, stick it on you know, your clipboard or you export it to file. Um, and then you do that about 5,000 more times because you also have to do it for all of your other jobs, all of your other logins, all of everything. But, you know, there has to be a better way. What if we could make this horrible process less painful? And the answer is we actually can with DBA tools. Uh, so DBA tools is a SQL Server PowerShell module built by and for the SQL Server community. Uh, it started out as a migration module way back in 2014. Um, it has since grown to over 430 commands and 125 uh, contributors to our GitHub repository. It is free, it is open source, and it's one of the most exciting projects that I've ever worked on. So when it comes to support, this did start out as a, as a migration module. So it supports all the way back to SQL Server 2000 through 2017, some Azure. Also, we support Express through Enterprise Edition, clustered and standalone instances, Windows and SQL authentication, default and named instances, and multiple instances on one server. So you can see that pretty much whatever you have in your environment, uh, we want to support it. And it's because I want to take this tool set, go somewhere else and not have to have any worries um, that something won't be supported. The installation is super easy. Um, if you can, if you have access to the PowerShell gallery, you can just uh, run as administrator, install module DBA tools. This will install it for everyone uh, or all of the user accounts on your server, including uh, the SQL Server agent. And if you just want to install it for yourself, or if you don't have administrator access, then you can just install module DBA tools, set your scope to current user. And if you go to our website at dbatools.io slash download, there's like seven different ways, including Chocolatey, uh, that you can actually download and install DBA tools. And we want to give a huge shout out. Uh, we used to have these slides, and I'm sure a bunch of you have seen this, you know, these like five slide intros. But in them, it used to say, hey, and you have to install SQL Server Management Studio. And that is no longer the case. Now you can have a clean machine, just install DBA tools. It comes with all of those DLLs, all of those libraries, um, and you can start administering SQL Server from the command line without any other installations. So I mentioned that we have 430 plus commands. Um, it, that makes it really important that you're able to navigate them. So we do include a lot of help. We have extensive documentation within each command. Um, we you use get help, which is something that comes with PowerShell. Just get help, the name of the command dash detail. That'll give you the examples, the parameter help, the notes, and so on. We also have extensive documentation on dbatools.io. We just moved to a new auto-generated system that was set up by our buddy Simone. I'm super excited. I'm going to show you this. But all you have to do is go to dbatools.io slash the name of the command, and it will bring you to um, our doc site. And some of the commands do have videos. So if you go to dbatools.io slash YouTube, you'll see a bunch of silent masterpieces because I'm a perfectionist and I just do it over and over and already I'm regretting my intro and I can't even put this one up. 
All right, so now it's demo time. If you go to dbatools.io slash doomsday, it's going to redirect you to um, the site that has all of the code. And also if you go to DB or sorry, tomorrow, um, I am going to be publishing dbatools.io slash dr. And that's basically gonna have all of the code that you see here. And it's gonna be an in-depth article about SQL Server DR. All right, so without further ado, let's get to this demo. Hey, Bill, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Am I yelling? Not at all. Excellent. All right. Okay, so let me... It'd be kind of fun if you, if, if you did just <laughs> randomly yell something. But I'll try to remember. Yet. All right, so um, in this demo, I have a few agendas that I want to push. I want to introduce people to a few things uh, if you're not familiar with it. And the first thing is CMS. This really doesn't have too much to do with DR, except that you could potentially uh, divide up all of your SQL servers in a way that makes it easier to manage the DR. So uh, if you go to dbatools.io slash CMS, there is an in-depth article there. And what this is, uh, this is just something that's really important to me that I use all the time. It's a central management server where you can um, it's basically an inventory of all of your SQL servers and you can organize it however you want. Some people do it by department. Some people, whenever they're performing migrations, will do it by, um, by the version. You can even do it by your site if that's how you want to work out your DR. And with Microsoft, what they um, pretty much set it up for was you can go to right click Object Explorer. You can even from here go to Object Explorer and it'll open up all of your SQL instances. Um, you can even do a new query against all of or, or parts of uh, your SQL servers. But for me, I really like to use it as basically a, a centralized uh, inventory for DBA tools because you can take, um, you can get your servers and then just pipe all of those in to all of our commands. So you can see there, there's site one, site uh, server, and site two. And if we look at the variable, then that has you know just a little SQL Server 2016 instance. Uh, I do want to apologize for using the ISC. Uh, thanks to Sapien, that is actually the tool that I use uh, whenever I'm developing uh, in PowerShell. And I know that a lot of other people use VS Code. However, you know I got used to these. I I, I use the mouse a lot, and I like these little buttons. So I do use the ISC uh, only for presentations. Um, but yeah, we do have a lot of registered server commands. So if that's something that you want to get into, uh, we will support it throughout our module. So let's move on to the DR. Uh, the first thing that we're going to look at is the export DBA script. Now, uh, whenever we were first making our export commands, it, it initially started with export uh, SQL login. And that's because you have to decrypt the, the some of the passwords if it's a SQL authentication. And... Um, and I was like, oh man, we'll just go through all of SQL Server Management Studio and we'll just go and export everything, you know? So we'll say export DBA login, export you know, DBA server role, export DBA credential audits and so on. And then one of the developers was like, hey Chrissy, why don't we just make it so that kind of like here, how you can go to audits, right click, script audit as, create to, et cetera. Why don't we just do it where you can get that SMO object and pipe it uh, to a command? And so that's where export DBA script came about. So that's the first one, and we'll get uh, more into that in a bit. Also, we have other export commands that aren't necessarily covered by export DBA script. Uh, things like uh, credentials actually require us to log in and decrypt uh, the some information from the registry and there's a whole bunch of other things in here that are just kind of special that we'll go over to we also have a lot of backup commands so you can back up your databases your master keys um, and some other stuff listed here and then also we do support some things we wrap SQL package.exe because man, the, the .NET stuff was super overwhelming. So I was really happy whenever Microsoft said that we could actually include SQL package.exe within the DBA tools module. Um, and they also let us have bcp.exe as well. And that's something that'll be coming later on. So first up, 
let's look at export DBA script. And we're going to start with something simple, right? We're going to, we're going to get, I really like this. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with select first. You can also have select last and you can also skip, which is something that I had always uh, liked with SQL Server and you could do, you know, the select the top. So this is our first job and you can just see that's there and you pipe that to export DBA script. You don't even have to specify a path. It'll just make it for you. It's not necessarily the one that you want, uh, but I do like to have, there's nothing more that drives me crazy. And whenever you're going through something, there's so many required fields. Um, so our scripts try to have as few required parameters as possible. So let's go ahead and take a look inside of what was just exported. So this will look familiar to those of you who, uh, who often work with your jobs and scripting them out. So when we do this and we say script job as create to, it'll look exactly the same pretty much. All right, next. Uh, you can also do things like uh, pass through, which means that it won't write to disk. It'll just actually pass it to your console. And you can even add a batch separator. So this is what it looks like whenever we just send it straight out to the console um, and we add the goes there. So after you're done with that, then you can get crazy. You can add some scripting options. Um, so we can see here, set that option using new DBA scripting option. And if we look at it, you may be familiar. This is really cool because um, it offers a lot of power and you can set this to whatever you need. You know, if you want to, you know, include your database context. So use master or whatever. If you want it to be an ANSI file, you can just set it that way. So let's set all of that. Um, something else I wanted to introduce you guys to, in addition to CMS, if you're not familiar with the uh, possibility of piping to click. So what we're going to do is pipe this string of SQL admin, that's my really terrible password, to clip. And now if I just control V, it's in my clipboard. So I know for sure that this command is going to work because I know what my password's gonna be. I'm not gonna accidentally type it improperly. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna get that SMO object, the get DBA uh, mail profile. We'll specify our instance. Oh, and that's what I wanted to do. A lot of people, like for me, I'm so used to working with Windows authentication. I often forget to talk about uh, SQL credentials. And we do support SQL logins or alternative credentials. You can even use an alternative Windows credential. Um, this one will detect that there's no domain or computer um, computer name, and so it knows that it's a SQL login. So we'll take that, pipe it. Uh, we will specify the path this time, and uh, we'll give it those those options that we set up here. And then also no prefix, so it won't say this was generated by DBA tools. And finally, I'm going to pipe that to invoke item so we can look at it. So I'm just going to paste there. And now it's going through and that's what it looks like. So I just exported it just like that. I don't even know if that's possible in SSMS. It could be wrong though. All right, so there are some other special things of what I had talked about earlier with those exports. So SP configure is one of them. I think it's because we put some stuff at the top and the bottom. Um, also the linked servers, now warning. Um, this will write your passwords to disk. It goes in and it decrypts it. This is something that was made available to us by Antti Rontesori at NetSpy. Um, super, super cool, very convenient, not so secure. Um, so here's, you can see this password, which I thought it was interesting by default, the distributor admin gets a GUID for a password. And then I also have a pretty weak password right here with SA but I like how fast that was. It's really nice. Even on this 2016 MacBook clunker. Uh, another one is export DBA login. Uh, if, if you guys remember SP help rev login, I remember thinking that it was a godsend, uh, but it sure was pain going through every single time. And it didn't really migrate a lot of stuff. We have this export DBA login that's special. Um, because it will go in and it will grab the permission sets and it does, it has this, um, server roles. It even updates the jobs, um, and changes their owners and it does a whole bunch of other stuff. So this is really, 
Nice. And this one actually does not write the password to disk. Um, it will write a hashed password, which some people say is still not uh, secure enough, but, um, but I like this solution. Other specials. So we have backup DBA DB master key. This will back up um, your keys, uh, but the path is going to be relative to the SQL server itself. Sort of like whenever you back up a database. So by default, and here we go, you can see the only thing I had to specify here was the SQL instance. It's going to, oh, let me, let me get a little, control V, control V. So that path there, is the path that just goes to the backup directory of the SQL Server itself. Uh, but if you want, then you could specify a path that your SQL Server will have access to. In this case, localhost backups. And we set the password, set the password, and there we go. So what if you just want to script out your restore? So you have all of your backups. Um, then you can just either use backup DBA database um, or your maintenance jobs to do your backups. And now I'm going to backup. We're going to have, we're going to back up our full, uh, sorry, our system databases and our user databases. And that'll be a full backup. Ooh, let's see if any jobs are running. This is one of my favorite commands because you can run it across your entire estate to see which of your jobs are running. You're waiting for something. And now I'm going to perform. So I just did a full. Now I'm going to do a diff. And I know for sure that's done. And log. So that's one log, two logs. And let's see if it's still running. Probably not. All right. And the third log. Cool. So now we know that we have full diff, log, log, log. Now. What we're going to do, this is one of the coolest things that has uh, ever existed. I've always dreamt of this. So you have get child item, so basically ls or dir uh, for that directory where it's backing up to. And then you pipe that to restore DBA database. You say output script only. And then in this case, we want to do with replace. Um, then that's just going to, as we had seen before, it's just going to output it to the console. And then you can pipe that to out file. So now what is going through, it's going, um, it's connecting through the SQL instance. The SQL instance is reading through each of those headers and it's, it's putting that chain together um, and then it's creating all of the scripts. So now it's done and we're going to invoke item. And here we could see, so we have that full diff, log, 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 full diff, log, 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 and so on. So this just makes it super easy, even if um, you know you forgot to do this, um, and you know you don't have this uh, your your restore scripts backed up. You could do this on a live instance, no problem. It'll just go rebuild that chain um, and then restore all of your databases. So speaking of Ola, if you use this backup script, we can restore an entire instance. Oh, that's just what I was talking about. So this is a live version. So this is taking everything in this workstation. A backups 2012 directory and let's go ahead and take a look at it so this will be familiar to those of you who use Ola scripts you have your um, all of your backups sorry all of your databases and then within those it'll be full and it looks like I only have some fulls but it'll be full and then diff and then the logs as well so here we have it like you could just sit back relax drink some tea if you're in Great Britain Drink some beer if you're in Belgium, maybe in Germany too. Drink some water if you're at home. <laughs> and so now it's going through and this is the output for it. Um, it gives you a lot of information that you can work with. It'll tell you this, you know, the file count. It'll actually give you the SQL scripts that it's executing. Um, it'll let you know the directory. And again, we're back to that. We want to, uh, require as little as possible. So by default, it's just going to use your default instances, sorry, your default uh, data directories and log directories. Next up, log shipping. So ooh, if you go to dbatools.io slash log shipping, that is an article that was written by Gary Barksley. Um, it's about a bunch of commands written by Sander Stodd. 
And I was actually working with Sander just last week, right before the SQL GLA conference. Um, and we added the ability, or sorry, he added the ability to uh, do log shipping against multiple instances. So you have one source and then a bunch of different destinations. I don't know why anybody would do that. I don't know a specific use case, um, but I figured that it's possible and I like to make things possible. I haven't written about it on the DBA tools blog, but you can also now copy DBA database to multiple destinations, copy DBA login to multiple destinations. So I just kind of wanted to make it a multiple destination uh, tool set. So this is something else that I wanted to introduce people to, which is splatting. Um, instead of, you know, typing across your whole screen with these really long parameters like source and destination and the primary, you know, and if it's just like one big line then it's really hard to make out, Instead, you can use splatting um, and it makes it really easy to read. So we actually don't need a lot of these parameters, but I want to throw it in uh, to be dramatic. And now what we're going to do, you see this was a dollar sign with this params. Whenever you're using, um, whenever you're using splatting, you want to use this at sign right before. So for a while, it was just like dollar sign and it wasn't working. And then I realized, oh, so what we're going to do is we're going to invoke DBA log shipping. So as we had talked about before, log shipping is a DR um, uh, solution available within SQL Server. And this makes it so easy because if you've ever tried to do it in SQL Server Management Studio, it, it just, it always failed for me and it drove me crazy. And Sander got this to work with no issue. So I really love it. Let's go ahead and uh, with this, we actually did say, so take that back up instead of making me um, do it or, or relying on one that already exists. So you can see this was really cool. It already, before I was even finished with my, my thoughts, um, it finished shipping that database to the secondary instance. So we took the database shipped from localhost SQL 2016 and we put it on 2017 and it set up all of the required things that you need to do um, underneath. Now, if you want to fail over to the secondary, a lot of people are actually using uh, this for, and this is actually what, uh, what Gary's article talks about. He used log shipping uh, for migrations, and this is how you fail over to your secondary. I love this because it is so easy. Check it out. So it's starting that copy job because log shipping re relies a lot on the agent. And then now it's starting their restore job. and uh, it's done so now if we go and we look at 2017 uh, then the database is there entirely so i could see this being used so very often if you have a vldb um, and you don't have time to do your backup and restores this will just make it so much easier so now we are going to talk about export dba instance i'm really excited about this i did write it for sql gla um, I love Glasgow. I went there for the first time last year, and it's it's actually, I think that it's one of the premier cities in the entire world. And I wanted to make sure that uh, they would let me speak at SQL GLA. And uh, so what I said in my notes was, hey, if you accept this session, I'll have to write a ton of commands. And then it got accepted. So I'm really excited. Um, Let's go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to export an entire instance. But before I do, I want to show you that all of my objects that I expect to exist are existing. So you can see, and I'm going to show you the pester test uh, in a moment, but you can see that this instance still has all of its databases. Like there's 25, 25 things that this checks for. Um, so it has all the databases, logins, credentials, server triggers, et cetera, et cetera. And um, this was a pester test. And this is pretty straightforward. Um, so whenever you're writing a pester test, you have this describing, you just copy paste and then replace a bunch of stuff. That's what I do. And it works and it's awesome. Uh, let's just look at the databases part. So we say the result is uh, get DBA database and within that result set, make sure that there's a database name, another DB, DB1 and DB with sprocks. And the same goes on for the login. So we have these logins. We want to make sure that all of them exist. Just go through that whole thing. So now that we know that all of our objects exist, 
Uh, if we were to lose all of them, we would expect them to be able to be put back. So let's go ahead and test that theory. We talked before about each of these export commands and there's this export DBA instance actually wraps about 50 different exports. So instead of doing it all at once, I know that you know some of y'all might have been snoozing at the beginning because it wasn't like high energy, but check this out. So what we're going to do is export the entire instance to this path. And you don't even have to specify a path, but I wanted to do it here. So you have your SP configure, your custom errors, your server roles, your credentials, your DB mail, your registered servers, your link servers with their passwords, your server triggers, your database restore scripts, the logins with all their passwords, audits, audit specs, endpoints, policy management, resource governor. Right now it's working on the job server, which has your jobs, your proxies, uh, your operators, um, and other stuff like that. And then now replication added this for William Durkin, didn't even show up, but he's here now. Hey, William, this is for you. Um, also, we have availability groups. I don't have any um, availability groups on this instance, so that wasn't something that you were able to see. But check this out. How cool is this? Like this makes everything, this is such a relief for me to look at because I had to write this all manually. Um, and it's just, you know, whenever you do stuff manually and it's not written for the public, it can be a little messy, but this had to be beautiful for everyone to see. And to me, this is beauty. I do need to add in, uh, William did point out like 010203, but I couldn't figure out how to make it really pretty in like 10 minutes. So that'll be for later. Until then, um, it's named that and we're just going to uh, order our restores by their right time. So I mentioned before that companies want uh, proof of DR plan, but I think that they should also require proof of DR testing. So it ain't a DR plan without testing. What we're going to do here is use test DBA last backup, um, which will log into your SQL server and then it will get the last full diffs and logs, create that chain, restore it as you can see here, and then perform a DBCC check DB. So this makes sure that all of your restores will work. Um, we don't require that you specify a database, but you can. We don't require that you specify another destination server, but you can. Um, and yeah, so there we go. This gives you some good information. And what I do is uh, in, in DBA checks, so if you go to dbachecks.io, uh, one of the checks is actually a pester test that goes through this command uh, and makes sure you know, that the uh, DBCC result is a success and also that the restore result is a success. All right, so let's test the output scripts. Oh, this was so nice the first time that I did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop everything. And it takes a moment because there's a whole bunch of stuff that I have to drop. And then what do we expect from these pester tests? We expect that it's just going to be a bloodbath. So let's go ahead and run this. Check it out, all red, nasty, nasty, nasty. Oh my God, this is an unmitigated disaster. So all of that, it's all gone. I had 25 tests, all 25 of them failed. Now what we wanna do is we want to perform the restore, but in order to perform the restore, the first thing that I wanna do is stop the agent. And it's not because I didn't back up and do whatever, oh, sorry. It's because um, all of our agent objects are in MSDB. And while I can restore each of those scripts one by one, what I want to do is show you that I can restore your system databases, um, everything but master, and you can go with that. So something else that I have to do, oh, I love this. So I killed SQL Server Management Studio in, that, um, in the previous one so it can remind me to go in and we could take a look at this. So we had Pester to show us everything's gone except for shipped, which I don't test for. We have no credentials. We have no audits, no audit specs. Uh, the XP, sorry, the agent is offline. And um, oh, then what we want to do is use get DBA process, specify the database, and then pipe that to stop process because I don't want anything to be using MSDB while I'm trying to restore it. Uh, get process and stop process is super cool. You can specify, um, you can see like all the processes that are using a database that are coming from a login, that are coming from a specific 
workstation or program, et cetera. Let me run this again because you could just run out a whole bunch of times. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to um, be restoring MSDB. We're just going to exclude any of the agent stuff. So we're going to get all of our files. We're going to sort it by last write time. And then for each of those, I'm just going to write some output and I am going to invoke a query. So I'm going to execute that one more time just in case. And let's go ahead and restore. So we're taking all of those, um, all of those files that we output and we're executing it against our SQL instance. So it's putting back those, um, those databases, all of the logins, all of those missing objects that we had seen before, everything is being restored. Distribution database, it always takes a little bit of time. I don't know why. Maybe William will have some insight to that. But this is the one that takes a little bit. But imagine doing all this by hand. And now you could just sit here and even three seconds is too long. So that's really nice feeling. And there we go. Now, I did say error action ignore, and it's because it'll be like, oh, this server role already exists, and it'll have way too much information. That's not something that you want to do whenever you're performing this in, uh, at work, uh, in production. Um, but for this demo, it looked the best, and I like pretty. So now we're starting up uh, our agent on 2016, and we're going to check if everything is back. And look at this, look at all this green going through all, oh, oh, oh my God, it's it's seriously exciting. Like every time that I watch this on one hand, I'm like, oh God, I hope it's all green. But on another hand, I'm like, man, that's 25 tests. That's, that's like 50 objects that it's just being restored. And this looks like a whole bunch of relief to me. Um, I absolutely love PowerShell. As a DBA, I wake up and I'm just so much more relieved because no matter how large my estate gets, I know that it's manageable because the things that I can execute against one server, I can execute against my entire estate, no matter how large it is. And um, yeah, so that actually concludes uh, this presentation. In real life, I are at the SQL GLA in Glasgow. Um, I had an MRE dinner and because I was like, win a win at MRE dinner. And I was giving that away because, you know, you need some sustenance in the event that there is a zombie attack, that, you know, something blows up. And uh, nobody, it made me laugh. I was not hurt. It made me laugh that nobody wanted the MRE dinner or they didn't know the answer to the question. But now I have an MRE dinner at home ready for the next presentation. So do we have any questions? Uh, yeah, please do. If you have any questions, uh, st stick them in the in the chat room. I can see your questions oh, now. Oh, check that out. All right, here we go. We have, well, we got some magic. <laughs> it's true. It is conference-driven development. I even did that for the extended events. And that's why I'm just like, man, if I want to put something on my to-do list, I'll just submit it. Oh, I'm so excited that David Stokes likes it. I know that he's big in the SQL Server community. And it is true. Like, whenever you watch it, you're like, oh, my God. It's just such a relief. It's awesome. I love PowerShell. Oh, my God. Is this showing my face? All no, right. we, got, we got my face now, unfortunately. It's, I, I'm not going to say that it's better than a blank screen, but uh, it's what you get. So I like your face. It's a good one. <laughs> uh, hey, so I, I had a question for you while we wait for questions to come into the into the chat room. How long have you been working on this? How, how when did you start? On whenever you say this, are you talking about that export? Uh, well, let, let's just go for the just the beginning of the whole module. Like when 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 was the first command made, and when did it really come into your head that man, this needs to be a whole collection uh, of commands? Um, so the first time was in July of 2014. Uh, I was asked, "Hey, can you please?" Um, can you please migrate this SharePoint instance? And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to go in there and write all of these restore scripts, um, migrate all of these things with SP help rev login. And by that time um, I had been using, well, I had been introduced to PowerShell in 2005, um, but I found it challenging because I came from a VB script and T-SQL background and I kept wanting to kind of put PowerShell into 
uh, you know, those squares and it just didn't fit. Um, and then 2011, I got into SharePoint and 2014 and 2013, I was doing a lot of VMware and it just made sense. Um, I was very surprised whenever I did search that there were no scripts available. I, I thought that, um, that somebody was going to have it and that it was going to be dynamic, but everything that I found was, you know, uh, M colon backslash, everything was hard coded. Uh, and I knew that for me, I wanted, um, I wanted to have a much better solution. And at the time, honestly, like a lot of people be like, Oh, you need to put this in a module. And I didn't understand the value of modules. Um, I was like, man, no, uh, then I'm gonna have to do two things. One import module to run the command. And, and I was like, why don't I just skip to the excitement and run the command? And now I understand how much, uh, how awesome it is. So it was September um, that I took all of those commands and I put them into a module. That was September of 2015. Yeah, so it, for a while, it was just a directory full of scripts. Um, and then I, I, and it was a GitHub repo because for me, I've always liked open source. Um, it has always been important to me. I think, you know, a lot of those dot coms, whenever they went away, um, I was like, oh God, all of the code is gone too. All of that knowledge. I mean, now I realize it was probably all junky code, but at the time I was young and, uh, you know, I was like all of these engineers and all of their hard work, it's all gone. And I always thought that, you know, if everything was, um, open source and generalized that it would really benefit all of us um, as technicians. And so um, that was something that, uh, yeah, that I put out there and that uh, turned into something that was, has been a dream come true for me. Yeah, that, that's really awesome. So I, I, I really consider you and this module to be a, a leader uh, in the database DevOps space for SQL Server. And I was just kind of curious, did you um, come up with a plan to be a community leader like this um, on your own? Were you drafted into it? How, how, how did you kind of fall into this role? Um, I remember, actually, I was watching William Durkin speak in, uh, in Belgium in 2015 about, um, about uh, SQL Server consolidations, and I wanted to raise my hand and be like, hey, I have this PowerShell script that could probably help you. But whenever I, I whenever I went to raise my hand, my heart started beating like super hard, and uh, my hands were sweating, and I just, I couldn't even say anything. Um, and so for me, speaking in public and, and you know, being a leader in that way, um, it, it, I, DBA tools itself pushed me to do that uh, because I, I needed people to know, oh my God, you can save yourself so much time. And also I wanted help. I wanted other people to add to the scripts. I wanted other people to give me different perspectives. Um, so it just, I think that it, it happened organically um, when I knew that it could be a tool set. Um, and uh, it, at first, I thought that we would be a complement to the SQL Server module from Microsoft. That's why we didn't start with a lot of get commands. I didn't want to overlap in that way. And um, but then they didn't really come through. I'm kind of disappointed in the SQL Server module. And uh, then we started, you know, then kind of have to go and backwards in that way. And now we are adding those get commands. We have some new commands and sets and so on and removes ads, et cetera. So do you, do you have like a whole roadmap for, for features that are coming? Do things just kind of trickle in? What, how um, does that work? I work so much on this. I'm really, really lucky to have a super supportive wife. Um, this is my hobby. I like to travel. I like to work on DBA tools. And it's important to me that whenever I work, I don't uh, generally have an agenda um, that it, I have to feel it. Um, and so a lot of times, no, I don't have a big roadmap. Uh, it, 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 in, it, a lot of times it'll correspond with something, a, a task that I'm given. So, it, you know, if I have to start working with certificates, then you'll see some more, some new certificate commands. Uh, I, uh, the conference driven thing, I wanted to, I wanted to up my game and really get into extended events. 
Um, and so that was on the roadmap because of the conferences. So no, in general, um, there's no specific thing um, that, that I'm coding towards other than if I have a project or if I have a, a conference that I'm working on. Awesome. Um, just, and then just a small question. What, what flavor MRE do you have right now? <laughs> Number six, taco dinner. <laughs> Taco dinner. I don't think I've had. It's been a long time since I had it on Maria. I don't, I don't think I've had taco dinner. Um, it's a. It looked really nasty if you look it up. Uh, it's, it kind of looks like uh, I, I don't know something you'd find in a litter box. Um, yeah, they, they all look nasty though until you taste them and they're delicious. I was surprised. You know, I had an MRE. I flew back home um, to Louisiana after Katrina hit and right before right before Rita hit. And I was helping my friends, uh, you know, clean that the the rotten deer out of their freezer, venison, whatever. Um, and it, you know, we built up an appetite, so we went get some MREs, and that was a fun experience. And I I didn't find it horrifying, uh, but I could see over time it could probably get pretty boring. Awesome. Um, so I I think what we'll do is we're going to draw the broadcast to to a close here, unless somebody has some some last minute questions. Um, but before we do, uh, I, I just want to thank you for coming um, for coming on to do a remote presentation for us. Some in the audience may not know that you're in in Belgium right now, and so the time zones are are less than convenient for some of uh, you know for some of the presenters. But you're uh, really great to come on, you know, really late at your night uh, in your uh, you know in your evening. So uh, I appreciate that. Um, I'm just completely, completely stoked watching um, this presentation. This is the kind of automation for SQL Server yes. that I, I just would not have been just some years ago, would not have been ambitious enough to even dream, you know, some of this uh, stuff. Uh, this is a level of automation that this just, it's just amazing. It really does take a village. You know, we have 125 contributors um, and there are uh, several of us, you know, that are on it every day in Slack and, uh, I absolutely appreciate everyone's hard work uh, because it does make all of this possible, and it is it is very exciting and relieving for me. Yeah, and and we we all really appreciate your your leadership with this and and uh, in the database automation for SQL Server space uh, in general. So uh, thanks for coming. It. Thank and, you so uh, much for having me. You've been really awesome, and that was a really fun interview. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks. Uh, so we'll draw it to a close. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and um, the link should stay up for later viewing. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.